Hello everyone and welcome to this Warcraft replay. It is the 2nd of December 2014. I need to really start dating my videos, or at least the day I record, because hopefully it will show you guys and give you some insight on how regularly I will be casting Warcraft now. But, uh, like I said in the previous series, it doesn't look like WC Replays is receiving all that many um, I guess pro to semi pro replays. Um, so, yeah. Uh, but, you know, I still have a couple of months worth of replays, hopefully, since I did actually skip the majority of, I believe it was June all the way till November. So, yeah. Anyway, this is from the recent, I say recent as in last month. A uh, recent tournament known as the Platform 11. Uh, it's sort of weird, actually. I don't have much information about this particular tournament. It's actually the first time I've heard of it. Um, quick Google search shows that it's a battle between uh, Chinese players and Vietnam players, but I don't know if that's true or not. I think that only implies to uh, the Dota scene. So, yeah, I'm walking on thin ice here because I have no info whatsoever. So, anyway, this is going to be an Undead versus uh, Human matchup. It's been a while, I would say. Uh, we've had, I think the recent not Undead versus anything would have been uh, Lucifer versus Cash, and that was an Orc matchup. So, yeah, uh, Undead Human. You could say classic, but... Uh, it's so complicated with Warcraft since the classics is actually a human orc because Warcraft 2 had that. But anyway, uh, let's get back to this and introduce the players. In the top right we have FQQ spawning in as the red human player. Now that's another player's uh, name I don't know how to break down. Meanwhile, his opponent is going to be a WFZ who I found out today uh, what his name actually stood for, and it was basically uh, the first initials of his name. I won't pronounce. I won't attempt to pronounce it because I don't want to be offensive to uh, people of China and all that. But yeah, um, I found out, and that's what WF said. WF said is indeed an acronym, but it's it's an acronym based on a name, it's not some weird collection of words into one like uh, W-A-N, which is stands for white and nerdy. Nope, uh, WFZ is a little more personal than that, I guess. So anyway, uh, Death Knight versus Archmage, pretty standard from both players. We do have Circlet and Claws for the Archmage. Unfortunately, Death Knight hasn't managed to pick up anything. Uh, FQQ has actually stolen both of the green creep camps, or at least the ogre that drops the item. So I would say FQQ has the much better inventory right now, but uh, WFZ is not approving. He is going to be chasing that Archmage. Boots TP staff might be picked up here. We do have the boots. We have the dust as well, actually. So. Um, Rather interesting on that pickup. It's most likely for the Crypt Fiends later on. Uh, if WFZ actually chooses to utilize Burrow, we do have the looks like pretty standard undead opening that we have seen in the past, I guess, three games since we had WFZ versus Lucifer series. Uh, graveyard, and then tier 2, and then start production on those Crypt Fiends. Uh, we will have to keep a, keep an eye out for, I guess, if WZ goes into instant tier 3 or not. Sometimes people do. <laughs> uh, trying to remember an undead human matchup here. And it's especially weird since uh, the Death Knight's not actually harassing. That's what I would have expected in a Death Knight to happen, but it's not happening, so... I guess it's kind of out of my comfort zone, I guess you could call it, but it's... I don't think I can call it a comfort zone if I'm a spectator. 
Anyway, Castle Tick is coming out for FQQ. He is going for Masonry Upgrades. I believe that's just plus one, which it is. Uh, Castle Tick. Hmm, interesting. Especially since we don't have a Barracks out, actually. So, um, even more interesting. I mean, I probably should have seen the No Barracks first, but uh, I just noticed it. It could be Griffin Aviaries, but, you know, I don't want to bet on too much. Uh, no Blacksmith down, so it doesn't look like a workshop will be followed up here. Uh, uh, this is weird on its <laughs> weird on itself. Anyway, uh, also an interesting hero choice, it is going to be a Goblin Tinkerer, second. Now, thanks to you guys, the wonderful viewers, that you've able to at least, you know, explain to me the role of this Goblin Tinkerer. And he basically proves to be some sort of harassment type of hero. I guess the playstyle is kind of like that with the constant clockwork goblins and all that stuff. But, you know, even after hearing that kind of explanation, it still kind of leaves a bad taste in my mouth because the Goblin Tinkerer never actually does anything effective compared to someone else like I would say Beastmaster. Anyway, good timing here for WFC to choose to attack since there's not much to actually defend uh, the base of FQQ. He will be losing a couple of farms. Thankfully, he has plentiful farms around, so he's not gonna, you know, topside in terms of supply. But yeah, even if he chooses to TP back, I'm not sure how he can actually accomplish defending this base. Um, he does have a plenty of towers, thankfully. Uh, so maybe he's gonna maybe rely on those guys over there. Of course, we could have a bunch of mercenaries being hired up for FQQ. Maybe, maybe go for a counterattack. But it looks like he's just choosing to farm. Really, really, I would say confident in FQQ's part here, because I mean his base is being attacked and he's not he's not worrying, which kind of tells me that he might have played this kind of play style before. Or, you know, can't actually think of a better answer to this. We are going to have one Griffin Aviary being placed down, so I am right on that part, but ooh, it's still a rather <clears throat> interesting choice because Crypt Fiends can still do very well against air units. We're going to have Dragonhawk Riders, okay. <clears throat> I mean, I was expecting maybe Griffins, since, uh, you know, I do remember they don't require Blacksmith. But instead, we're going to have those Dragonhawk Riders coming out, and that is going to be a rather interesting choice. Obviously, Dragonhawks are a lot more easier to, uh, what is it, mass up than Griffins, just because of the cost and the supply and all that. But, you know, Griffins are, are kind of hard to mass for a reason. It's, they're really good units. Obviously not when they're whipped, and whip is on the way. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, this, I don't know about FQQ, he's, I, ugh, maybe not much consideration to this one. I mean, I'm doubting FQQ a, a bunch in this game right now, and, I mean, he could maybe prove me wrong later on, but I'm very confident that WFZ might be able to pull this through. I mean, a lot of damage is going down to the crypt. If Web was interrupted, before it was finished. That might have been good, but it looks like Web is going to be finished, and yeah. I mean, I don't think uh, WFZ even saw the Griffin Aviary. He didn't, so he is predicting that a an Aviary is coming up. We're going to have one Dragonhawk Rider actually slipping by, not even focusing on uh, defending his base. I mean, FQQ is solely relying on that wall of buildings to hopefully keep his base alive <clears throat> and of course the towers as well meanwhile FQQ is actually doing a, a lot of damage and I am surprised uh, let's let's wait a little while before giving credit to the goblin tinkerer here not sure if it's entirely because of his part I mean I don't see a I don't see a factory place down or workshop nice web over there on the dragonhawk rider preventing it from uh, continually channeling the the what is it 
cloud to prevent those towers from actually attacking. So, you know, WFC had kind of delayed the the effective effectiveness of that push a little bit, but you know, uh, you can't keep a bird web forever, or a dragon hawk, I guess you could call it. Uh, Frost Nova and Death Coils are being used to wipe out the peasant population of FQQ. Uh, the towers are still fairly scary. He WFC is going to lose a, f a crib fiend for that, but he is actually busy trying to micromanage his acolytes. You know, def definitely trying not to lose his source of income here. Meanwhile, FQQ actually taking quite a bit of BB. Uh, don't know what happened there. Taking quite a bit of a beating on his Goblin Tinkerer. Might need to go back and maybe heal up, but he is going to place down another factory. And it will probably die. But it isn't because of the because of the cloud. I'm actually surprised that FQQ is has only trained up one Dragonhawk. I mean, is he expecting to win this base race, I wonder? Oh, never mind. There's the second Dragonhawk. Okay. Uh still kind of weird that he waited this long, but huh, really, really weird game in my opinion cause both players do not care for their bases maybe if he, if, uh, WFC does more since he did send his Death Knight back to defend and this might push FQQ away while WFC is still attacking I mean since he has an army, but yeah, those towers are still problematic. I mean, we have masonry upgrades plus three, and that's a benefit for having castle tech because you can hit, you can get that uh, level three. Meanwhile, back at WFZ's base, his graveyard's been destroyed. He has no crypt. He oh, never mind. Uh, he rebuilt his crypt. I might say. Uh, but he can't cr uh, produce any more fiends because he doesn't have a graveyard. It's very weird. Um, TP staff has been purchased, so we can just rapidly, you know, move anywhere on the map as long as he has a medium too. And he's gonna TP back to his base. Slaughterhouse might be destroyed. I mean, there is training up a meat wagon, probably the best option for WFC to do in order to win this base race. And the Death Knight is bloodthirsty for that tinkerer. He does have boots of speed though, so you know, kind of pointless to keep on chasing. Meat wagon is going to be uh, completed, but is it going to be allowed to live? The answer will most likely be yes, unless the water elemental has other things to say about it. And WFC is still attacking the castle. We're having more farms being produced, as apparently uh, FQQ is uh, kind of supply blocked. Probably not the best thing to happen right now, especially in this scenario where a meat wagon is en route, but we have a griffin. Okay, that's gonna be maybe, what is it, game changing? It will tip the scales, what other sayings are there? Uh, but anyway, it's gonna do all of that, and I'm not sure if W said could outrace his opponent here, because, I mean, the benefit of having, or the disadvantage, I would say, of being undead is you only you only usually have five repair people, acolytes. I mean, ghouls can't repair; they can fend off, but you know they can't keep your buildings alive. Uh, meanwhile, humans they can spare you know extra peasants and all that to keep your buildings alive. So base racing as an undead seems to be not particularly good. And W said is finally going to be pushed back and defend because he is afraid that he might lose this base race and to be fairly honest uh, without a meat wagon, without, without any sort of siege he probably would have needed maybe 10 more minutes to break through that like by the time the gold mine collapses runs out of gold and then can't afford to repair that's pretty much what needed to be happened if that was grammatically correct or not. Pally is coming out as the third hero for FQQ and probably not the best thing to happen for the dear old Paladin as he gets surrounded and 
absolutely demolished by those grip gains. Uh, so yeah, FQQ is going to continue this attack without a dedicated healer. And if you, if, uh, WF Sid has chosen to attack once again, TPing his Death Knight back, however, and looking to maybe snipe out one of those heroes with the Death Coil. Instead, thanks to the web, uh, Dragon Orc has been, I guess, webbed, but, I mean, not much has been killed over there. And the uh, goblins are still hurting the graveyard, and, ah, okay. Here's a tip for you if you want to live, don't sit next to a sleeping creep camp as it turns daytime, because they will turn on you. Okay, Meat Wagon is out, and it is starting to attack the castle. Pality is out as well, and he is strolling by. Huh. Apparently he only got the attention of one. Uh obsidian statue and it does look like the graveyard has been taken down once again I mean I mean yeah I guess I could finally admit that the tinkerer is good for something I mean I'm not sure about level 1 but surely level 2 pocket factories can deal quite a bit of damage because if you don't know clockwork goblins do have this self-destruct uh, function where even if they get destroyed they blow up and deal damage and of course it's rather effective against buildings so I mean even if uh, WFC had destroyed all the goblins they would have most likely been positioned next to the graveyard and then boom uh, the only option there would have been to destroy the factory itself but WFC actually didn't choose to defend at all and just you know goblins full duration let's being a little ballsy here, I'm not sure if that was necessarily uh, intelligent, but a death coil is going to heal him back to full. Okay, here we go once again with uh, FQQ knocking on WFZ's door, and I mean, damn, still, FQQ is still repairing the castle, and I mean, he doesn't have that many peasants anymore, so maybe, just maybe, I don't know. The Black Citadel is actually being focused down by uh, WFZ. He, w he did send his Lich back, curiously enough. But is he enough to actually defend? I mean, the Death Knight, maybe, because he's probably a lot more tankier than a Lich. Lich can sure dish out, dish out damage, but, you know, if something like this happens where he gets bursted down very, very quickly, uh, he might be a little screwed here. Another Pog, another Pog Factory is going to be placed down. Paladin is being focused. Probably not the best position to be at, and he almost died. Thankfully he didn't, and he will run away with minimal amount of health. A lich, thinking about it, but you know, definitely should think over your decisions twice. Okay, we're going to have the crypt being destroyed. Meanwhile, WFZ is still assaulting. I mean, honestly, if I was WFZ, I would have sent both my heroes back, because the Death Knight serves absolutely no purpose over here. Except for maybe Unholy Aura, which is completely useless in this case, where movement speed is not being used and health regeneration is healing full hit point units. Uh, this could potentially snipe out the Paladin here and might be able to. Nope, doesn't look like he is going to do that at all. Okay, something did happen and he did die. I have no idea how. I, I mean, come on, really? Did FQQ really team kill his own paladin? I mean, it's totally possible. Like, what's the quickest way of he fully healing uh, my paladin? And, yeah. Well, the best option maybe would have been to just straight up kill him. Since he's level 1, he's, he's cheap as chips. Could have happen happened. I mean... Not saying that it did, but how would how would I have known that the Paladin would have died in like being surrounded by his allies? I don't know. Meat Wagon has been taken down, uh, so not much damage is going to be put down to the castle. But since we don't have that many peasants anymore, maybe we'll have we'll we will have broken even, which I don't think we are going to have because. Uh, FQQ is attacking one more, 
And the graveyard has been placed in a different location once again. And a crypt has been placed in a more, I guess, safer location. Okay, here we go with these clockwork goblins once again. And a lot of damage is actually happening thanks to those uh, griffin riders. Even though fortified armor takes less from magic, uh, I mean, griffins still deal quite a bit. I don't remember what their lightning hammer upgrades actually do. I think it's... It, it, uh, I mean, it could be additional damage to buildings, but I don't know. Oh well. Anyway, uh, destroyers are actually out as well, so interesting that WFZ chooses to finally, you know, put out destroyers. I mean, it'll definitely handle against those uh, elementals with the Devour Magic, but can it deal with these annoying griffin slash dragon hawks? Maybe. Who knows? Uh, Goblin Tinker is actually being focused down by the destroyers. Out of mana, so no orb, oh, no orb of annihilation here. Oh, never mind. Uh, apparently FQQ likes feeding uh, the said some mana. And the Lich is getting low once again. This is a really interesting game. It's really weird in itself. But I think FQQ might have been worn out. I mean, look at it. He's absolutely no resources anymore. He can't he cannot repair his building. He has no lumber actually. So you know how I said 10 minutes for the gold mine to you know deplete? I kinda got that right. I mean the only thing depleted is lumber and yeah it's not looking good for FQQ here. He might be running out of steam. Okay the graveyard's being placed down once again. And... Okay, a lot of investment on peons to the trees, but that is going to be GG from FQQ. And then it's going to be game. Weirdest game I've cast this month, I would say. Maybe, I would say, for the past two or three months. But then again, I haven't been casting all that much recently. So, anyway, this game, definitely the weirdest. In a, in a while. Um, I don't know what to say about it. So, in the end, I'll give you guys that. I'll see you guys in game two.